Hi, everyone. Welcome to Inside the Bobcat Bubble. We are so excited to have you here as a part of our Parents and Family Weekend. We're going to wait a few seconds to let everyone get in. For those of you who are just joining us, welcome to Inside the Bobcat Bubble. My name is Anna Bonomo. I am a student here at Quinnipiac, and I will be the host of today's session. Are you a parent or family member wondering what life has been like inside the Bobcat Bubble? Well, we're going to show you and share some of the exciting things that have been going on on campus so far and what students can look forward to the rest of the semester. We have a great panel of people that will be joining us today talking about different areas of campus, such as student life, campus life, residential experience, health and wellness, and so much more. You'll notice that some of our panelists will be moving into their offices later on to take their masks off and get to talk to you a little bit more uh, in a Q&A session, session that we will have later on. We really want you guys to communicate with us by using the Q&A function located at the bottom of the screen to share any questions you might have. We'll also be asking for your feedback by using the raise hand function at the bottom of the screen. So let's give that a try. How many of you are or are parents or family members of a first year student? Wow, so that looks like almost half of us are first year uh, students or family members of. What about some sophomores? Juniors and seniors? Well, it's great to see so many people from our community tuning into today's session. We're gonna kick things off with uh, some brief remarks from some of our panelists, and then we're gonna get open up the floor to some questions from you. So joining us today are Christy Chase, the Director of Student Health Services, Aaron Previstelis, the Director of Campus Life for Student Centers and Student Involvement, Tyler McNeil, a Senior and President of the Student Programming Board, Shane Joseph, a third year three plus one resident assistant, also known as an RA, and he oversees the three plus one communications living learning community in Ledges, Jamie and Jean Baptiste, a senior and the Student Government Association's Vice President for Public Relations, and Dave Tomchek, the Associate Professor of Entrepreneurship and Strategy. Let's start with Christy, who's going to share her perspective from Student Health Services and Counseling. Christy? Hello, everyone. Welcome. My name is Christy Chase, and I'm the Director of Student Health Services. I oversee the daily functioning of the Health Center. I'm coming to you today from one of our exam rooms at the York Hill Health Center. The Mount Carmel Health Center is located on Bobcat Way, as the York Hill Health Center is located in the Student Center at the York Hill campus. I would like to touch base on a few topics that I think may be of interest to you. The university is conducting surveillance testing for students twice a week. These students are selected to come, from, come for testing that week, and this, there is some footage that's available to be able to see the testing events that happened earlier in the semester. The testing is a supervised self swab. It is a PCR test, so it has a high accuracy rate. Um, we had, this one was at the, uh, I believe the York Hill garage. We now conduct it in the athletic center and can process probably 800 to 1000 tests in a day, usually within a four hour window. Results are generally available 24 to 36 hours after they have been received at the lab. The care offered through the health center has changed during these times of COVID. We now offer telemedicine visits when appropriate or at least used for part of the visit. Students will call for an appointment at the health center. A screening and a quick assessment will be done by one of our registered nurses to determine the best type of visit, whether it to be telemedicine, in person, or a combination of both. An example of that would be that a student would call if they were ill to the health center. The nurse performs the brief assessment and then schedules a telemedicine appointment with one of our providers. Our providers are physician's assistants, nurse practitioners, and we have a doctor as well. If there is any testing that needs to be done, we'll then perform the testing on site at the health center. We are testing ill students for COVID if they are exhibiting any symptoms that could be consistent with COVID. We will then isolate that student even while the test is pending. The university has a team of over 20 contact tracers that help to identify students who have had exposure with someone who has tested positive. The health center is in direct contact at all times with the local health department and we work very closely with them. If a student is placed in isolation or quarantine, they will be provided with a packet of information and resources. We have it in paper form, which you can see here. And we also have it electronically. 
Students found to have a positive exposure must quarantine for 14 days. You all must understand that you cannot test out of quarantine. All students are expected to download the Symptom Checker app and complete the screening daily. A registered nurse is monitoring the dashboard for those that are reporting any COVID type symptoms. Then they will reach out if those are reported and schedule an assessment and an appointment if needed. Students who also can receive their test results from that weekly testing through the app. For those of you that attended the previous virtual town hall that happened at, right prior to this, Dr. David Hill spoke about our dashboard. The dashboard is being updated every two to three days or more frequently if necessary. It is always updated shortly after we receive the results from that weekly testing and if we have any other changes that are going on. I'd also like to focus on something non-COVID. I'd like to let you know that we provided eight flu clinics. They covered all three campuses and over 2,000 students, faculty and staff were vaccinated. I also realize that this webinar is taking place at the same time as another one focused on mental health. So I just wanted to touch base on counseling services. While I don't oversee counseling services, we work very closely together. If a student is interested in counseling services, they can call to make an appointment or go online on the MyQ counseling site and complete an intake form and somebody will reach out with them. Thank you. Thanks, Christy. So by a show of hands, how many of you or your students have joined a student organization so far at your time at Quinnipiac? Well, for those of you who haven't, Erin's gonna tell us a little bit about some of the other student organizations we have on campus and how you all can get involved. Erin? Hi, Bobcats. I'm Erin Provisilis, Director of Campus Life for Student Centers and Student Involvement. Campus Life is comprised of four areas, Student Centers and Student Involvement, recreation, community service, and fraternity and sorority life. In student centers and student involvement, we oversee all policies, procedures, events, and training for the 130 plus undergraduate student organizations. We also manage the new student organization recognition process. So if you wanna start an organization that we don't currently have, you can. So far this year, the undergraduate student organizations have hosted 220 events. 72 were virtual and 148 of those were on ground, in-person events or hybrid events. We also in student centers and student involvement oversee the student centers. I'm gonna turn my camera around so you can see Carl Hansen. There's Carl Hansen right there, looking beautiful as always. That little tent over there, that's where students go through if they order something off the Boost mobile app to pick up and it goes into a room inside the student center. I thought that would be helpful to point out. We have some outside dining area over here and that's Carl, we love Carl. Okay, turning my camera back around, give me a second here. Okay, so we oversee two student centers, Carl Hansen on the Mount Carmel campus and then Rocky Top Student Center up on the York Hill campus. The student centers have a plethora of amenities, dining halls, bookstores, recreational facilities, fitness centers, dance studios, ATMs, copiers, um, all sorts of stuff like that. I'm gonna talk for a minute about recreation. The recreation area oversees fitness centers, intramurals, and club sports. The fitness centers are currently open. Reservations are required after 11 a.m. for both the weight room and the cardio equipment. Many fitness classes are also being live streamed for students who are in quarantine or isolation and or, or could be remote learning for the semester. Both intramural softball and beach volleyball leagues are currently running. Virtual sport leagues have also been offered and recreation has held mini golf and lawn game tournaments. Recreation will be, will be offering pickleball, esports, and more virtual programming in November. We currently have 12 club sports teams, three men, three co-ed, and three women. Tryouts and practices are going on, are ongoing with wearing face masks and social distancing. Our esports has been competing in the Electronic Gaming Federation since the start of October, and hopefully other competitions can occur come spring. The office, the office of Community Service has been hard at work focused on getting our students registered to vote. We'll be providing shuttles to local Hamden polling locations so that students can vote on election day. They also are planning their alternative break trips for both winter break and the spring semester. 
Over the winter break, students will be working with Habitat for Humanity in New Haven, and the spring break program is currently still being determined as our spring academic um, calendar sort of changed, and we just got that information this week, so we're still working on what the spring program is going to look like. As for fraternity and sorority life, there are 18 fraternities and sororities that are recognized at Quinnipiac, which is about 20% of our undergraduate students. We do not have fraternity and sorority housing. Last year, the community performed over 4,180 4, hours of community service and raised over 145,000 for various philanthropic causes. Students are eligible to join at any time. As of this weekend, fall recruitment has mostly wrapped up, but all fraternities will be recruiting again in the spring, and about half of our sororities still have some limited spots to fill for the spring. More information will be available to students over winter break. Now, I'm on the quad, which is a place, I'm gonna turn my camera around again, which is a place where a lot of our events take place, right? So this is the quad, the big part of the quad, and that over there is Eklund. And then we're gonna go this way. This is the School of Business. There's Sleepy Giant. This is the best time of year to see Sleeping Giant. It's so pretty um, at this point in October. And then if I keep going around here, there's Arnold Bar Barnhart in the library and then back over here to Carl Hansen. So we have a lot of events that take place um, on the quad. And one of them, which I know we're gonna roll some footage here in a second, um, was the involvement week that happened. Involvement week took place on the quad, as I said, the week of September 14th. We had 25 student organizations or clubs that were featured daily so that students could come and participate um, and be virtually, be socially distanced, um, wear their masks, they hand sanitized before they, they interacted with anyone. Um, but we were able to showcase all 130 plus student organizations and the club sport teams during that week. Um, students could meet members, they learned more about each opportunity, and they could sign up to join. So if you're still looking to get involved and that's something that you want to do, the best place to go is to check out Do You Q U. That's our 24-7 online virtual hub for involvement. If you go to the My Q homepage and then quick links, right underneath there is Do You Q U. You can click it, you log in using your Quinnipiac username um, and password, and every single student organization has a profile there. There's contact information for people, and you can reach out directly to them uh, to figure out how you can join. Um, and then as far as just, if let's say you're not necessarily looking to join a student organization or you've already joined, but you wanna know what events you can go to, um, there's several different places you can go to get that information. Do you QU would be one of them. You can also download the uh, app of Do You Q, which is actually called Cork. It's powered by Collegiate Link. So if you look up Cork in the um, app store, you can find it, download it for free. And then you have all the events right at your fingertips. We also send a weekly email on Thursdays called the Bobcat Bulletin, which, was, which goes out to undergraduate students highlighting all the events that are happening Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And then last but not least, we have the virtual quad, which is qu.edu backslash virtual quad. And that highlights things that are happening virtually as well as on ground and in person. So there is lots going on, lots to do. The quad is busy today. Um, and yeah, that's it. Thanks so much, Erin. Don't forget to put any questions you have in the Q&A function and we'll get to them in a little bit. So as you can tell, there's been a lot happening on campus. By a show of hands, how many of you or your students have been to one of the many events that we've had, such as mini golf or movie night and even virtual bingo? Well, for those of you who haven't been, they're really fun and you should definitely check them out. Tyler is gonna talk a little bit more about the events happening on campus and some other ones you can look forward to. Tyler? Hey Bobcats, my name is Tyler McNeil. I am a senior PR major and I am currently here on Bobcat Way Lawn, a great location for all of our events. And I'm currently the president of the Student Program Board. The Student Program Board is, our, is the main program board here at Quinnipiac University. We program a variety of events and program at least three events each week. And I'm gonna get into those right now. So with COVID, we have seen a lot of different changes with our programs. So we kind of have different range of ranges but it has not stopped how many programs we have been doing and our offerings for the community starting off we have been able to do in-person events as you can see here we had the joker out on the quad uh, we are able to do in-person events in a safe manner with masks social distancing 
uh, and cleaning of certain uh, objects that may be considered high touch. We are very happy to be able to do in-person programs at, such as trivia and bingo. These programs are also moving into a hybrid form soon where we have the technology to make sure that students can uh, have fun at these events in person as well as join virtually, whether they might have not gotten a spot or if they're completely remote for the year. So the, we're very thankful to have our in-person events. We do have a, a new type of event called grab and go events where students can come pick up supplies and do an event from the comfort of their own room. Uh, a few weeks ago, we had a DIY coaster event. Last weekend, we had a virtual paint night. So students are able to come grab their supplies. They can either do it at the area that we reserve or they can bring it back to their dorm, do it with their roommates or suite mates and have a great time. We have also offered different virtual events, such as virtual game nights, virtual comedians. That way the entire Bobcat community can join in on these specific types of events. Uh, as I mentioned before, I'm here on Bobcat Way lawn. It's a great outside place where we have done movie nights, game nights. And then right behind me on this side is the tent up in South Lot. This tent has been a huge help as it's a large space where we can social uh, distance all of our students who want to participate in an event has also been a main hub for all of our grab and go events. We're very thankful to have to be able to be on campus programming at least three times a week for our students, sometimes even more. So we're very excited to be able to offer these events to as many students as we possibly can. Great, thanks Tyler. Again, just a reminder to put any questions you might have in the Q&A function as we are about halfway through our panel. So now let's hear from Shane, who's gonna talk a little bit about what it's like to live on campus. Shane? Hi everybody, my name is Shane Joseph. I'm a resident assistant or RA here in the Ledges building. Uh, this is a freshman residence hall, uh, mostly home to a lot of our three plus one programs. Uh, such as business and communication. Uh, I am one of the RAs that is in the three plus one living learning community, uh, which I was actually a part of my freshman year. Uh, so that's been really nice to be able to do that this year uh, to kind of give back to the program that I got so much from. Uh, I'm a three plus one uh, student myself, like I mentioned. Uh, this is my third year of the undergrad program. Uh, last year, I was a resident assistant uh, in the village, which is a sophomore area. Um, so I've also had experience with sophomore suite style living. Um, and in the spring, I was in Los Angeles for the QUNLA um, internship program. So I've had a lot of experience that I can bring uh, to my residents and uh, to the LLC itself. Uh, now, as an RA, uh, our normal responsibilities are overseeing the residents, uh, facilitating social, academic, and personal adjustment to the college lifestyle, and also most importantly, to help students develop a sense of community among themselves uh, and among the residents. Uh, and of course, there's also um, conduct issues and conflict management uh, that comes up as well. That's part of our job. Uh, but specifically about the community building, um, of course, it looks a little bit different this year, um, but we're still so happy that we've been able to provide so many in-person and virtual uh, programming options. Um, for instance, just yesterday, uh, we had a three plus one specific uh, content creation contest. Um, so we had the residents that are in the three plus one communications community. Uh, they came together and we had a little contest uh, where we gave them the theme of Bobcat Pride. And they had 60 minutes to come up with uh, some sort of graphic or ad or script uh, that they thought best represented Bobcat Pride. Uh, we've also been doing building wide programs. For instance, uh, on Monday at four o'clock right here in the courtyard, uh, we're gonna have a building wide pumpkin painting program. Uh, so that's a great opportunity for students to get to know other residents in the building that might not be on their floor or they might not have classes with. Uh, so it's a great way for them to meet students that they wouldn't otherwise uh, be able to meet through their uh, normal university uh, doing. So we have that program here for them. Uh, we also have individual programs. Uh, for instance, the past few Fridays, uh, I've been here uh, in the courtyard helping students register to vote. Um, so that's what's called an individual program. So usually uh, residents would just be walking by um, and you do the program that way. They can sit down with me and talk about, um, you know, what, how important voting is and how to get registered, um, everything like that. Um, so that's a few types of the different programs that we've been doing um, for our building. Uh, but the residents have also uh, been great about uh, building their own community. For instance, a lot of them 
uh, go to the SPB events together like bingo or movie night. Uh, they've met a lot of other residents that way and they've continued to go to events um, by meeting each other through uh, outside events, SPB. So uh, our students uh, are very, very involved with that kind of thing. Uh, clubs as well, specifically for my uh, communications residents. Uh, a lot of them are a part of Q30, uh, which is our on-campus TV station here. Uh, I myself am the uh, head writer for Quinnipiac Tonight, which is our uh, on-campus uh, Saturday Night Lifestyle program. Uh, we have a lot of three plus one residents that are a part of that, uh, whether they are cast or crew, whatever. Uh, and they, those shows are broadcast uh, on Thursday nights. So what was really cool uh, is last Thursday, there was a show and uh, a lot of the residents uh, in the building watched the show. And then uh, when they came back, they all came together um, and kind of congratulated each other and they're working together through that. Um, so even in these you know, different times, students are finding ways through us and through their own initiative uh, to establish and build their community. Uh, and when it comes to COVID in particular, uh, living in the residence halls is of course a little different than usual, uh, but all of our residents have been really great about following the guidelines and receptive to new policies. Uh, for instance, uh, our bathrooms, uh, public spaces and common rooms, uh, those are cleaned every single day uh, and face masks are required at all times outside of your individual room. Um, so the students have been being uh, very, very great about that. Uh, they've been super receptive. We've had uh, next to no problems with that. And then there's also the random testing, uh, like was mentioned as an RA, uh, we get tested uh, once a week as RAs. Um, so that is uh, just another measure towards uh, keeping the community safe. Uh, and that allows for um, the things like I mentioned, like the clubs and the game nights and the community building events. Uh, so we are very grateful that we've been able to uh, do all that stuff. Um, you know, despite, despite everything going on, I feel like uh, this year and having experience as well last year, um, I think that community building uh, is just as strong this year uh, and our residents are really seeming to get a lot out of it. That all sounds so great. Thanks so much, Shane. So now Jamie is going to tell us a little bit about what his senior year has been like for him. Hello, everyone. My name is Jamie and John Baptiste. I am the Vice President for Public Relations on the Student Government Association. Just to give you some insight on what student government is, we're essentially a group of elected individuals who serve as a voice for the students by acting as liaisons between faculty and the students. So we work on a variety of initiatives to enhance the student experience as well as mitigate any kind of concerns that anyone has. So these initiatives range from things as big as free laundry for residential students. In the past, um, students had to pay $1.50 for washing and $1.50 for drying. Um, and this was a prominent concern for a lot of people. So one of our members in our organization actually worked on that and now it's free. We've also brought club sports to campus. So now they're officially affiliated with the university, which is something we talked about uh, previously. Um, we do things like hydration stations, the residential buildings. Um, we actually were a good promoter in shifting the entire campus to a tobacco-free campus a few years ago. So there's a variety of things that we work on. My role on specifically as the vice president for public relations is to promote those initiatives to the student body and ensure that um, everyone knows that they're happening. So I run things like the social media. Um, we have an Instagram, Facebook, and a Twitter. Um, this is super important this year because a lot of our engagement that um, is happening this year is all virtual. Um, so it's important that we promote those changes to um, the, and advancing all the social media accounts. I also uh, promote those things, things to Q30 and um, the Quinnipiac Chronicle, which is our student news groups. Um, and those are some of the things that I do to make sure the student body knows what's going on with student government and the changes that are going on. Now, some of the other things that I work on, um, I'm working on a few spirit based initiatives. Um, so this is just to boost the overall campus morale um, around campus. So you may have heard about Bobcat Fridays. Bobcat Fridays is a brand new tradition in which we invite all of our members in the Quinnipiac community to show off their Bobcat pride and spirit and wear their QU gear and colors every single Friday. So whether you're remote, um, on campus, alumni, faculty, staff, everyone in the Quinnipiac community is invited, including all of you. So show off that, bo that Bobcat pride and spirit every Friday. We also do something called Bobcat of the Month. This is a tradition in which anyone in the Quinnipiac community can nominate an undergraduate student who they think exemplifies good qualities of a good Bobcat. 
um, and these qualities are outlined in the student body creed. So when a Bobcat of the Month is selected, what we do is we try to surprise them in a location that they might not necessarily expect. So um, that's just to elevate the overall spirit around the tradition. So we've done this at like athletic events, we've done it at club meetings and Quinnipiac events. So you never know when you're gonna win Bobcat of the Month, but everyone kind of just gathers around and it's super um, exciting to have that happen. So to shed a little insight onto like how, what's been going on recently, we actually recently hosted um, a student government election with the event involved the entire student body a few weeks ago. And we actually got a turnout of about over, just over 2000 students voting the election, which is really great. That means a lot of students want to have their voices heard. Um, and this is super important because a lot of the things that we do um, is mainly based off of student concern and student demand. So if there's something that a student wants to see change at Quinnipiac, they can reach out to a representative and ensure that it's getting done. Each class has a uh, cabinet consisting of a class president, a class vice president, and a group of senators. We also have our specialized representation cabinet to address some of the more niche concerns that affect specific populations on campus. So those positions include athlete, uh, athletic senator, commuter, veteran, health, wellness, and accessibility senator, multicultural senators, we have two of them, international senator, um, an academic at large, there's our liberal arts senator as well. The main way to contact us is to either reach out directly to your designated representative via email or social media, um, or you can also visit us anytime you want in the student government suite. It is located on the second floor of the student center, which is right above the cafe and right around the corner from Starbucks. So if there's any kind of concern that any student has, um, definitely, definitely encourage them to reach out to student government because some of those bigger initiatives we have been able to push through and we're here to represent everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Damien. So this semester, like everyone at Quinnipiac, I have been in a mixture of in-person and virtual classes, and this system is known as QFlex. So Dave Chomchek is going to tell us a little bit more about that and how it works for him and his students. Dave? Thank you, Anna. And hi, everyone. So you probably are wondering, is the in-class experience as good as all the out-of-class things that we have? So Q has been really, really committed to making sure that your students have the best possible experience in the classroom all the time. So we've adopted QFlex, which allows for students to be both in person and at home in the same class at the same time, being taught by the same instructor. Because we want to make sure that one, we can observe social distancing in the classroom. Right now you can see the classroom that I'm in. So I can stand up, walk around, and the view that you guys are seeing right from the image on the right is the classroom and what the students actually see as I'm going around and talking. But I can also do one on one interactive with my own laptop in order to give a more personalized connection. So when I have guest speakers, for example, it's really nice to be able to showcase them one on one straight or connection with with uh, the students. But the nice thing is, is that it's not just Oh, hey, we have some technology in the classroom. During this past summer, all faculty were uh, given the opportunity to have experienced mentors who have done digital teaching before. And there was an actual virtual class that we all got to go through that helped us understand how do you bring interactive and engaging, and exciting activities, teaching styles, pedagogies overall into the classroom to make it as engaging as possible. So that means that I don't have to just lecture at the students. I actually can have team projects and fun activities. One of my classes this semester is a creativity class, which requires a lot of hands on interactive things, which Because of the QFlex, you might think, oh, there's some problem because only the people in the classroom get to hands on manipulate stuff. But because of the training that I've received, I've been able to come up with ways to incorporate everyone and make every person feel engaged every step of the way. So we are really committed to trying to make sure that everyone has the opportunity to have a full on awesome education, just like the, they were getting before COVID set in. Great, thanks Dave. So you all have been waiting so patiently and now is the time to get your questions answered so you know exactly what is going on inside the Bobcat bubble. If you haven't asked your questions yet, don't worry, there's still time. You can still put, place them in the Q&A function at the bottom of the screen. So let's get to it. So are there, some people are wondering if there are capacity levels for in-person events and will additional sessions be added so more students can attend? Erin, why don't you cover this one? 
Sure. So there are capacities for in-person events. Um, if it's an outdoor event, the capacity is 100 students, um, unless it's under the tent in South Lot, which that capacity over there is about 140 or so. Um, if it's an indoor event, the capacity varies depending on what the space is able to accommodate um, with giving six feet for social distancing. As far as if um, it fills up quickly and, and offering additional sessions. It's really up to the student organization that's hosting the event. I will say that the student organizations are paying a lot of attention to events that are filling up quickly and are popular and it's definitely things that um, they're starting to kind of offer additional um, opportunities to do. One of the examples of that is our bingo um, that Tyler can talk about more, but um, you know, bingo is really a hot ticket at Quinnipiac. So that's something that we offer several times throughout the semester. Um, so I do think the organizations take those sort of attendance numbers and how quickly things fill up into consideration when planning. Great, thanks. So dining on campus in the world of COVID looks a little bit different. Jamie, and can you talk a little bit about what the Boost mobile app is and how it works? Sure. So the Boost mobile app is essentially a tool that students can use as an app you could download on the App Store, um, Google and iTunes, um, excuse me, Apple. So the way it works is you essentially place your order via the app and then when it is ready, it notifies you through your email and also on the app itself. And you can just pick up your meal um, in the designated spot that Aaron actually showed earlier um, right outside. Um, there's like a room that you could just enter th through there. Um, there's also the component of in-person um, ordering. So we, they are expanding some of those locations a little bit more. So for example, Sushi um, now has a component where you can um, actually go in and order um, in person. Um, and then we have Starbucks, which is um, gonna do kind of a model of both um, soon where it's you can order online and also order in person. So Boost is definitely um, just like the way of ensuring that everyone is safe and that we're ensuring that the lines aren't too long and um, that students still have an opportunity to eat. So another question, when we talked a little bit about the QFlex model, we said that some students were in person and some were online. How does that work and how does it determine who is where at what time? Awesome. So QU, before the start of the semester, all the deans sat down and worked through each student's schedule to try to optimize the amount of time that they can spend in classroom in person, because we know that, that is a really primary thing. But we also want to make sure that we weren't having students run from having a class online in their off campus home or in the dorms into a classroom and then back. So they work to make sure that each student's schedule allowed them to be in one location as consistently as possible. So we created something called the cohort system. And the cohort system says, based off of a room's capacities, for example, the room I'm in right now can hold 13 students. So we try to get 13 students here in each class, and then the rest of them are online and remote. And then they will rotate. So those who are in person one day will not be in person the next. So that way everyone gets a chance to be um, in person as much as possible. Great. So if a student has to go into quarantine at what point, what can they gather before they go into quarantine? And is there a time frame that they can do so? Sure. That's a great question. So yes, students that are going into quarantine will be notified of that. We have a list that we'll run through that of items that they should remember to pack because I know it's probably a very stressful time when they're being told that. We also have it included in that pamphlet that I had shared earlier. Um, I think that's a really good question too. If we have a student that's coming down to the health center that we will be testing potentially for COVID, they are also being instructed to bring a bag with them and told to bring those items with them so that from the health center, we can move them directly into isolation. Um, linens are provided in our quarantine and isolation space as well. So changing gears a little bit, if a student has an issue with their mailbox on campus, who can they contact to fix that problem? Uh, yeah, I can take that one actually. Um, I uh, have worked at the on-campus post office uh, since freshman year. Uh, so if you have a problem with the mailbox, uh, you can go to uh, the Mail Services Center, uh, which is behind the uh, College of Arts and Sciences. Um, if you go to that mail center, that is where the new uh, post office window has been set up. Uh, so there's actually uh, no post office uh, in the student center this year, uh, just because uh, space-wise and capacity that uh, wouldn't work with uh, how the post office functions. Uh, so that is now uh, all located in the mail center. 
um, which is nice because that's also where the uh, packages are delivered. Um, so it's a little bit more of a streamlined process. So any um, questions about uh, mailboxes or how to order or how to send things out, uh, if you walk down to the mail services center, uh, there's a window there. Uh, they let in a few people at a time and you'll be able to uh, talk to an attendant about any issues or questions that you have about how that uh, process works. Great, thanks Shane. So if someone is interested in eSports, what is that and how does it work? I am so happy someone asked this. I am the coordinator for eSports for QU. eSports is competitive video gaming. So this semester we are actually partnered and actually last year too with the Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference. So it is a recognized sport by the NCAA and going forward, it will continue to grow. But we encompass not only the ones that are officially um, school versus school, but also all the informal competitions as well. For example, next weekend, the game club is going to be hosting a Super Smash Brothers tournament. So eSports covers all of that, and it's a totally welcoming environment for anyone of any skill level. Awesome. So going back to some of our other events on campus, someone was wondering if there are fees for the grab and go events in particular. So with a uh, student program board, uh, there are no fees at all for any SPB events this semester. Uh, in the past, uh, certain events have required additional payment at a much lower rate. This can include travel trips or concerts, but uh, our normal grab and go events, any bingos, trivias, there's no additional fee for any in-person, hybrid, virtual, or any grab and go event. That's great to know. So again, don't forget to put any questions you might have in the Q&A function. Jamie, when you mentioned earlier the freshman, I mean the Bobcat of the week, is that for freshmen only and who gets to choose that? So uh, just to clarify, so the tradition um, Bobcat of the month and uh, it's for anyone in the Quinnipiac uh, undergraduate community. Um, so essentially what happens is that when someone gets nominated, we go through all, all the list of names and like we look at their submissions and I sit on a committee um, and it's a closed committee and we have a list of criteria that we look at in order to evaluate um, who wins for that month. Um, something important to note about that tradition is that if you're nominated, uh, let's say in September, um, your nomination stands for the entire year. So you can still win um, in January. Um, so yeah. Great. So uh, for the training for teaching with technologies, who provided that? Was that a QU staff or outside provider? So QU provided the training and what was great was that it was actually our education department who are most centered on different types of pedagogies and how to teach digitally who provided the actual training. The ongoing mentoring has been provided by people who have experience with the digital teaching style. So a lot of the graduate professors and people who have for one reason or another done a hybrid course in the past. Awesome, thank you. So Erin, earlier on you mentioned ways students can find out about different events. Can you talk about that a little bit more? Sure, so um, there's a couple of different ways that students or community members can find out what's going on at Quinnipiac. Um, for student organization specific events, you can check out Do You QU, um, which you can find by going to MyQ, quick links, and then do you queue is a link right off of there. Um, when you log in, which you need to do in order to see everything that's open to all students and staff and faculty and community members at Quinnipiac, you're gonna use your Quinnipiac username and password. It's the same one you use to log into your email account. Um, if you wanna have the sort of mobile version of do you queue, it's called the Cork app, C-O-R-Q. Um, and it's Quark powered by Collegiate Link, which you can find in any of your app stores. Um, it's free to download and it's got all the events that the student organizations are hosting. Um, we also, in Campus Life, we send out an email weekly on Thursday called the Bobcat Bulletin. It goes to all undergraduate students, sort of highlighting what's going on for the weekend. And then, um, in terms of sort of larger scale, if you want to know what's going on at Quinnipiac, you certainly can check out um, the calendar, the events calendar um, that the university has. And one of the best places, I think, over the last couple of months that we've kind of come um, been driving folks to and has been really successful is the Virtual Quad um, website. So if you go to qu.edu backslash 
backslash virtual quad or just VQ, um, you'll see sort of um, all sorts of virtual events that are going on as well as on ground and in person, which we sort of shifted to uh, once we were back on campus in the fall. That's a great place that has a lot of um, well, it's pulling from all sorts of areas. So not just undergraduate student organizations, but really um, a good breadth of what's going on across all three campuses. And Erin, while I have you, are there any fees for being a part of a club team? Um, for the club sports teams, yes, there are fees. Um, it kind of varies depending on the organization and, and what they require. Um, so like ice hockey um, is a little bit more expensive than say running might be, um, but there are fees for each of those, those groups and that's something that um, is gone over with folks prior to the tryout process so that they understand um, you know, what sort of financial commitment they would be making. Great, thank you. So I know we have shuttles that run on campus. Does anyone know um, how they are running this, this, this semester? Are they reduced, limited? What are some of the spots that they are going to? I do know that all of our shuttles run between our three campuses and they go on a, a weekly, I mean, on an uh, every 15 minute basis. So you can get from Mount Carmel to York Hill and to our North Haven campus. Yes, that's true. And my understanding, I believe, I don't think the shuttles are running off campus right now. I think that's something that, right, everyone's saying no, great, okay. Um, they're not running off campus into the community right now. I think that is something that we'll try to bring on, you know, as, you know, the situation around the pandemic kind of improves. But for right now, we're trying to keep everybody in the bubble. Um, so that's why those are, are not running at this point. So if someone wanted to tune into our virtual esports uh, and they weren't on campus, is that something that's possible? Yeah, so all of our games, all of our official Mac sanctioned games are streamed on Twitch. So there are links that get posted every single week. And also if someone is interested, they can either send me an email directly or Justin Ellis is our president for the club esports. So either one of us, happy to help connect anyone to all the resources that we have for eSports. Great. Will there be any musical or dance performances on campus this semester? That's a great question. Um, it is something that we're shooting for. Um, I know that our dance organizations um, are, are, some of them are hoping to do their showcases that they normally do at the end of the semester. Uh, the same goes for our acapella groups and whatnot how we're gonna do that exactly, we're still trying to figure out. Um, I could see those sort of being events that will be happening live and we'll be virtually showcasing them so people would tune in sort of similar to this style. Um, but that is something that we are planning for and we are trying to work with the organizations to make that happen. Great, so at this point in the semester, have students been tested uh, multiple times for COVID? Um, they have some different rates, but I think part of our success here at the university is that we required all students to submit or do a pre-arrival PCR test. So we're able to identify students that potentially were positive um, and have them wait until they had made, you know, done their 10 day isolation. So that really was successful. And then upon arrival, all students were tested. So going into classes, we knew students had two negative tests, which was great. Um, some students are tested weekly as, you know, the RAs are, and, you know, the, it depends on what the modelers decide for that week and if they're, you know, a little bit more look at out of campus, um, commuter students or, you know, where they want to push the testing. So I know some students might have been tested two to three times, some might be one to two, so it varies, but pretty much once a month, people should be selected in the random selection. Great. Well, that is all the time we have for our Q&A. Thank you all for attending our Inside the Bobcat Bubble today. We have a lot of other great sessions that are taking place as a part of our virtual parents and family weekend. Be sure to check out some of those other events by following the link that we're going to put in the chat right now. When you open up that link, you're going to see a schedule of the rest of the events that we have for today, as well as that are going on tomorrow, too. So you'll see on there something like at 2 p.m., you can hear from our learning commons on the ways they support students' academic 
holistic journey. At 4 p.m., our healthy habit session will teach you different ways to stay active and healthy from home. And our Building Lasting Connections, a multicultural vision for Quinnipiac at 5 o'clock today is a conversational panel and a Q&A session that focuses on our multicultural populations at Quinnipiac. Again, there are also events that are taking place tomorrow, so be sure to check those out on the site as well. You can register for those sessions through the link in the chat. We really are so excited that you were able to join us today and we really appreciate everything you all have been doing to help keep our Bobcat bubble safe. Have a great rest of your day and we hope to see you at one of our other sessions.